Welcome to my channel. My name is Alexis. And in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, sustenance, food, drugs, the stuff you consume to meet your needs. All right, so it's probably no surprise when I say that everyone's ideal state or condition is a sober one. One entirely natural and free from the influence of any substance that it does not itself produce, but one that is able to, also able to produce great bliss within and without the being. It's the kind of state we would call nirvana, and it's the conclusion of our evolution. That being said, we're not all entirely aware of our relationship to our sustenance. Moreover, many of us are faced with medical issues that require treatment uh, with certain medications, some of which may not have been prescribed. If being healthy is the goal, then all kinds of sustenance, food, drugs, media, etc., that lead to a balanced state have their place within our culture. As with anything, moderation is key. Everything you consume becomes you. That's just the nature of our system. So we should use our discretion when selecting the stuff we decide to put in our system. We know that if we put in our system, what we know that if what we put in our system is preventing us from meeting our life goals or connecting with others in a productive manner, we've got a problem. That being said, let's talk about the ideal diet. For optimal health, go on an 80-20 alkaline diet. That is 80% alkaline forming foods like your veggies and fruits, legumes and grains, generally speaking, and 20% acidic forming foods like meat, dairy, spices, bread and starch. Taoist master Montauk Chia has written a book outlining the alkaline diet and I recommend you look it up for a more specific list of foods. This kind of diet can help prevent all kinds of illnesses such as cancer, depression, etc. A top-notch spin-off is the Mediterranean diet, which is supposedly by medical professionals like the best diet in the world, right? Which is high in fish and veggies. Another good principle is to eat as little as you need. It, that's a Japanese philosophy. Uh, you want to avoid excess sustenance because it's just more stuff that the mind, body, and spirit will need to process. Clear fuel, clear mind. Clear mind, and you'll have access to every possibility. Now onto the drugs. The only one you need is your breath. Check out the breathitarians when you get a chance. I know that isn't something that people are always willing to accept or practice. It takes quite a lot to get there. And I know that at different times of your life, you might be looking to experiment with substances to experience things from a different angle, but it's still the truth. You should know that there are drugs you should never try. But aside from the drugs that a doctor would prescribe, there are other drugs that have medical benefits that haven't been fully accepted by the medical community. And my general recommendation here is to avoid drugs unless you've talked to a doctor and they've given you the okay. They should, be, they should only be used for medical purposes. Marijuana can treat anxiety and depression. Microdosing on psilocybin or LSD in a medical setting can resolve psychological trauma like that of PTSD, build new connections between areas of the brain to produce more coherent cognition, and give you insight into the objective reality you're immersed in, something beyond the program you've either accepted, adopted, or carved out for yourself. The kind of insight those substances can grant you in the right setting is enough to relieve depression entirely and facilitate the death process, having people on the verge of passing on go peacefully. Then there's ketamine used in medical settings for depression, which can resolve all of the root causes of the illness. The point here is that hallucinogens aren't as terrible as Nixon made them out to be all those years ago, and that treating certain illnesses or conditions sometimes requires the intervention of foreign substances, especially if we're too constrained by the circumstances of our life and can't see past said program. Now, the last component that I wanted to touch on here is the media. We are bombarded with messages in the news, movies, shows, music, games, social media, and radio, some more than others. The ideal here is to monitor the messages you're receiving so that you're only receiving the kind of messages that are constructive to your condition. That being said, all communications are a biofeedback mechanism. And sometimes bringing your awareness to those messages is what's needed to reconcile them with a greater purpose. Art is art. No one can negate that. 
Expressions of all sorts and varieties are meant to be heard, seen, and understood. However, as a general rule of thumb, it's a good idea to keep it fresh and cycle in and out of various kinds of programming to keep things interesting. It's also a good rule of thumb to support media that has constructive value and add something positive to your life and the lives of everyone else. I say this mainly because if you're bombarded with the same thing every day, it tends to soak in, and that's not always a good thing. But in the case that you can manage it, you know maintaining the uh, ideal while still tending to the media, it's important to contend with various points of view that gets energy flowing. Again, the goal here is to use the communications with moderation as a tool for self-development. You don't want to depend on its stimulation to maintain or regulate your mind, body, and spirit. And you certainly don't want it to interfere with your life goals or those of anyone else. At a certain point, a constructive tool can become destructive. Don't fool yourself with denial, accept it when it happens, and get help. And that's all I have to say about sustenance and, you know, the whole you are what you eat thing. <laughs> if you have anything to add, please go ahead and add it in the comments below. If you like the video, like, share, or subscribe. Thanks for watching.